in the 80s, professional wrestling was taking over everything, and a couple of little pink toys for 25 cents was turned into a franchise. I am the Game Collector, and this is Second Opinion Games, and today we look at some ultimate muscle video games. Second Opinion Games Early in the NES's life, we got Muscle Tag Team Match on the NES. And you can tell it's very early in the Nintendo's life cycle because this game looks absolutely terrible. But if you jump past that and give it a try, you'll see that there are eight playable characters here and each one has their own special move that is unlocked when a Powerball is thrown into the ring and both characters try to frantically chase after it. If one character happens to get it, well, he's going to start blinking like crazy, and then he could unleash his ultimate devastating attack. Each person's attack is different, so you should really take the time to learn your character inside and out, even if there only is a couple of quick actions. Basically, there's just a punch, a jump, and a tag out. And eventually you have your special move, where some characters have a flying special move, some characters you have to circle around behind someone in order to unleash it, and other ones can just tap the button and throw an axe and completely shut down your opponent, but that special move is a little bit weak. Usually the harder the move is to execute, the more damage it will do. Meaning Muscle Man has the most devastating attack as he has the Kuna Buster freaking pile driver to launch someone up in the air and smash their head open, pretty much killing them. Well, at least it would in reality. A common strategy here is using the ropes. Occasionally, you could throw an opponent into a rope and then clothesline him when he comes after you. Classic wrestling style. And another method is just by standing next to the ropes, and when someone gets close, hit the jump button, and then you could do a flying forearm attack that pretty much just kills everyone that comes near you. And it is really hard to block. Overall, for a two-player game, this one is really quite bad. But if you play it for the single player, player experience, you're probably going to have a good time downing these awesome enemies. And if you happen to make it so far into the game, well then you're going to be rewarded with strobing death arenas where you're just going to have a seizure and fall on the ground and start shaking because everything is freaking flashing here. Who thought that this was a good idea? Jumping ahead almost 20 years, we have Ultimate Muscle Legends vs. New Generation for the Nintendo GameCube. With 20 playable characters and each one having their own storyline, it's going to take you quite a long time to play through all this one. There's also the collectibles, the little pink characters that started the whole thing you could actually collect as you play through and beat the game again and again. Each storyline is relatively short. I want to pay a little bit more attention to one character here, and that's Dick Dick Van Dick. Now, this was originally a cartoon series that aired on Adult Swim very late at night with lots of potty humor. So, Dick Dick Van Dick tries to transform himself into a Dick Dick, which is a small type of antelope that's basically afraid of everything. And he thinks by harnessing the ultimate power of the world's smallest deer, he can transform and control the entire world. So basically, his entire goal is to become a dick dick dictator. And no, that is not an exaggeration. That's the actual storyline behind Dick Dick. And he is the greatest wrestler to never win a match. Basically, he's so overconfident that he always loses. So actually, playing through the storyline here, I was expecting to lose again and again, even if I win. But no, you continuously win, and he brags about how awesome he is. But it is hilarious with lines like, Get a hold of yourself, Dick Dick. The controls here are deep as well as simplistic. You have a punch that can counter a grapple if your timing is just right. The grapple can unleash a massive devastating move, but is easily countered with the punch. There's also a jumping attack and even a jumping throw. Of course, there are awesome tag team matches and in 
case you wanted a Royal Rumble, well, you better believe they have this too. Now, even though there is wrestling here, there are no pinfalls. It's basically just beat your opponent down until you are the survivor. I guess that makes it more of a fighting game than a wrestling game, but I really can't complain. As you attack and get pummeled upon, you'll see that your level meter might go up. You'll see level 1, level 2, and then level 3. Level 3 is your ultimate attack. Both triggers at the same time will unleash it, and it will jump into a full-on cartoon where it shows a devastating attack. Knowing when and where to use this is key, but however, if you miss when you try to use this, you're knocked all the way back down to level 1. So make sure you use it wisely and also make sure you know where you're at and what character you have because you don't want to miss or maybe your character can only unleash his attack while in the air. So learning the ins and outs of every single character will give you the best possible enjoyment out of the game. If you happen to track down the original cartoon, you'll be happy to know that all of the voice actors are still in their roles, making that this is the most complete cartoon to video game experience I think I've ever played. The storyline is incredible with each character having their own story, some of them longer and some of them shorter than others. The special moves are super over the top, and yeah, sometimes they can take a little bit while to watch, but you can skip past them if you happen to see them for the 4 millionth time playing with friends. And you could always play one to four player and you could have a crowded rumble event right in your living room, which is a great time. Things do get a little bit awkward with four people in the ring though. When you're in the grapple, you can't beat someone up halfway through the maneuver and your character kind of locks on to whoever you were currently beating up. So sometimes switching between the different people to beat up is a little difficult, but that is a really small gripe for an otherwise perfect game. <laughs> A better year later, we had a sequel on the PS2, Galactic Wrestling, featuring Ultimate Muscle. And this time, they added a few things, like the ability to pin your opponent. So, if you see someone low on health, and also make sure that they are low on their special meter, you could dive on them for an easy pinfall. If they happen to have their special meter filled, well, then they could kick you off relatively easily, and then continue pummeling you. Also, they have the ability to attack someone while they're down on the ground. So you could always get in a couple of cheap shots while they're down and you could even grapple with them and start wrestling around and the throws here are still incredible. However, this time around the special moves I noticed you can't really skip past them. Maybe it was just me and my busted old controller, but unfortunately I couldn't skip past the moves. Even though I don't know why you would want to. They're hilarious to watch. And they also added in load times. Yes. Load times right in the middle of the match. You know those special events cartoons that we just talked about? At the very start of each one, you'll feel like a little bit of stutter as it has to load in that data. Also, before you jump into a match, there are more loading times, taking up to 30 seconds just to jump in. And this really takes you out of the mood. But my biggest problem I had where they added into this game, outside of deleting the story mode and throwing in some other random pieces of garbage where you don't have any control of who you pick. It's just one or two people that I really don't care about at all, which is really frustrating. But no, they had to go and ruin it by making the announcers say the same thing over and over again. Now, I looked around in the options trying to figure out how to turn this off, and I couldn't, making the announcers pretty much ruining the entire game on top of the awful load times. And the characters honestly don't look quite as good as they did on the GameCube. How did they take such an epic wrestling experience, add tons of characters to it to supposedly make it better, but in the end made it a lot worse, making this one one really expensive game to track down that's really not worth it at all. Power is at peak capacity! Power is at peak capacity! 
Magnet Power! Magnet Power! Minus! The Handhelds 2 got some Ultimate Muscle love. Ultimate Muscle, the path of the superhero, came out right around the same time as the GameCube game did. Sadly, there's no GameCube connectivity here. You can, though, link it with another Game Boy Advance player if someone also happens to have this same hidden gem. And it's basically just a wrestling timing game. There are still punches and kicks depending on which character you have. And if you hit both action buttons at the same time, you could unleash a really strong punch and kick. You could also jump into the ropes and do the forearm attacks or the jump kick attack. But the grappling system is where the game is truly played out. When you grapple with someone, you'll see a little bar, whether it's red, yellow, or green. If you happen to tap into the yellow portion, well then you have a mild chance of pulling off your attack versus your opponent, who might also be able to tap into the same area, and you have to go back and forth. Whoever initiates the grapple has the best shot about pulling off their attack, but it's not an automatic win. If you happen to get it into the green portion, well then you chances are have won and then you see it play out the announcers down at the bottom sort of talk your way through the game but the problem here is that every match lasts way too long the life bar here is insane and you never actually see it instead the icons up on the corner they slowly turn to red and when they get red enough then you could unleash your ultimate attack now fair enough you can unleash your ultimate attack at any point in time in this game by holding the right trigger when you initiate that grapple and if you time it just right you'll throw them up in the air but then you have to time it just right again in order to actually pull off this move. And that's where the biggest gripe I have comes with the game. You can't just beat someone into submission. You have to pull off this finishing move in order to win. No buts about it. Wait, what? What? There's a freaking butt here? Oh my goodness. Like, what is this game rated? Oh, 13 and up for comic mischief. Well, I should have saw that coming because potty humor was everywhere in the cartoon and you could even fart in the match and that will cause damage to your opponent. Yeah, by pressing the select button, there's a taunt here. Jumping back to that special move, you have to land it perfectly when someone's energy is almost completely out in order to win the match. Now, I know this was a handheld experience, so they're trying to do something to artificially enhance the length. Also, there's some little-known characters that you don't see in some of the other games, like Diabolic who's just the worst. And some of the other characters were ripped directly from the cartoon as well. So if you really love the source material, well, you're probably gonna have a good time with this, even if every match takes a really long time and you have to get your timing just right in order to win. This is not a bad handheld wrestling game. It's just one that has a little bit of a learning curve. Now this isn't every Ultimate Muscle game, but sadly this is all the ones that we got. In Japan, there was like 20 more of them. Muscle for the NES is okay for a single player experience. When you play with a friend though, it's just sort of awful and very laughable. For Ultimate Muscle on the Game Boy Advance, well, it's kind of fun, but again, it's definitely more of a single player experience and it's very timing based. Ultimate Muscle on the PlayStation 2, they break the game by having announcers that are super annoying, unskippable cutscenes, 
However, they did add the ability to pin, making it an actual wrestling game, and they added a ton more characters, but completely cut out the storyline. But for your ultimate, ultimate muscle experience, you should turn to the GameCube, where you have 20 different characters, each one with their own storyline, incredible gameplay, fast moving, almost no loading times, and has an epic ready to rumble experience without having to plug in one of those four player dongles into your PS2, because the GameCube had forethought to make this into a party machine. So, Ultimate Muscle for the GameCube is one of the best fighting games you will ever have the opportunity to play. But of course, that's just my opinion. Thanks for watching.